Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to Thursday Night Live. How's everyone doing? It's good to see you. So I'm jumping on a little early because I have to get to my daughter's school in a little bit. So I got to jump on a little bit early. So earlier today, I put a post on Facebook that's talked about the attraction factor. And so I was kind of posting a question about if you were aware that attraction happens on two levels. There's the there's the conscious attraction. You know, those are the things that we are aware of, you know. Uh, I like your looks. I like the way you talk. I like your habits. I like your, you know, the little thing, the thing, anything that we can become aware of, anything we can see and know. And then there's the second level, which is the unconscious attraction, which is the things that we don't know, right? And and so I proposed the question, which one has a greater pull? And so. I, a lot of people commented, and it was really, really good comments. I want to share a few with you. My friend Maggie, she says, ooh, interesting topic. She says, from my personal experience, unconscious, unconscious attraction has been greater because you tend to attract where you need growth, which is an excellent point, excellent point. But ever since I focus on my personal growth, I'm more aware, on, I'm, I'm more aware of the conscious attraction now. Which is an excellent point, you know. We attract where we need growth, like the law of attraction says. You attract what you are. You attract from your uh, what you predominantly think about. And so she started working on her own personal growth, right? And so as you become, you, as you do that, you bring more unconscious stuff to the surface, and then you become aware of it. You work through it. You heal it. And guess what? Now you become more and more conscious of who you are, your truth, and as a result who and what you're attracting into your life. Then we have my friend Beth. She says the all the power is in the subconscious mind. The conscious mind is the is the sorter and the sifter. And what we feed what we feed it matters, though the fuel is deep in the mind. So very true. It's it's working the it's how the relationship of the conscious mind versus the subconscious mind, how it works. Conscious mind is everything above the line, subconscious mind is everything below the line. My friend, let's see, let's see what we got here. Yeah, my friend Rose, she says that it's definitely the unconscious that has the more power, uh, but not anymore for her. She's someone that I can testify does a lot of personal development work, personal growth. A few other people mentioned unconscious for sure. My friend Don says unconscious because it gets it gets to you and you follow it without realizing it without even realizing it and you can't even deny it so yeah because it happens unconscious my friend christy she says depends on what on what 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 season of your life are you on she says an immature uh, in the immature season of our life it would be more than unconscious attraction uh it would have more pull clearly and then after life experiences and maturity the conscious attraction would have a greater pull and rightfully so because you realize what matters that it's on the inside what matters, not so much the surface stuff, which is so true. Now, I want to share with my friend Michelle. She's a colleague of mine and also a friend and a mentor. She says, I think like a healthy blend of both. She says, I think I like a healthy blend of both. Because I know that as long as I have my body, I choose the growth, which is beautiful, so true. She said, I would also add that at the soul level, we have agreements with other souls to do spiritual development work together in this lifetime. On point. I love it. She says, these agreements, these agreements can be decided upon, af- upon after or even before you're born. She says, in her limited human experience or her limited human perspective, uh, may tell me that my subconscious attraction is related to issues I have with my parents. And the way I see that is, you know, our, our our developmental years in our environment growing up, our formative years. And she says, but my soul says this relationship can help you heal that on another level, which is at the spiritual level. And it says, I have consciously chosen to remain in a relationship that appear challenging to the outside world, 
because but because at a soul level I knew there was great growth that was going to occur. If I stuck it out through the muck, those attraction fades and I learned my lessons. So just my thoughts based on my experience. So true. That is so true. There's always a bigger story. It goes back to the theory that I was sharing with you guys before and a couple months ago about whether you believe you're just a human being having a, looking for temporary moments of uh, spiritual uh, connection or whether you're a spiritual being having a temporary human experience. So it kind of goes back to that. And my friend Carmen says, I think that unconscious has a huge pull because whenever you aren't paying attention or making intentional choices, which is awesome. I agree with that completely, making intentional choices. It can, um, it can creep in. And since it's probably based in the past, again, excellent point. It goes back to who we are as children and, and the beliefs and, the, and the, how we make sense of the world, the agreements that we made as children. And then it says, uh, it's based on the past version of ourselves. So I think it can hold us back from growth. Very true. I find it easy to let the old, the old me creep back in without noticing. Exactly. Excellent points. So going back to the question, which is unconscious attraction versus conscious attraction, which has a greater pull. And there's a quote that I want to share with you. It's from a lady named Patricia Sun. She's a motivational speaker and a, and, a, and a spiritual teacher. She says, we fall in love not just because we have matching goals and dreams, but also because we have matching junk. And, and it's that pain, you know, that pain that we're going to work through, you know. Like like uh, Michelle was saying, we're working through this stuff at a much deeper, greater level, which is the spiritual level. And so you may be in a relationship that may be, it may look like it's not beneficial to you. It may look unhealthy. It may look difficult. It may look challenging. But the thing is, you're working through some stuff there. You're working through some pain. And that person is, has shown up because your pain matches theirs. So that's why we have matching pain. You know, we're coming to work it out. We're working to dissolve it. Now, at the very beginning, when everything's butterflies and sunshines and rainbows, we don't see that. And a friend of mine shared with me that there was a study done on the chemical that gets released in the brain um, that gives us that sense of falling in love. And how long does that chemical last? It lasts about three months. So within those first three months, we're feeling like we're falling in love, that everything's beautiful, everything's beautiful. And then after those three months, now we're getting into the nitty-gritty, things start to come to the surface. What we're here to work, what we're, what we're going to work on ourselves is going to show up. Because I often ask my clients, you know, how do you see yourself? You know, you, how do you see yourself? You don't. So you need a mirror to show you who you are. So that you can figure out what is it that you have to work on. So oftentimes we get frustrated with our significant others because we think that it's them. When in reality they're just showing an aspect of who we are that needs to heal. Okay. Now granted, yes, they have stuff they have to do as well. And then there you are showing them who they are. Okay. So that you can heal them. And the truth is, you know, life and the personal challenges that we go through, the personal um, difficulties that we go through aren't here to paralyze us or to stop us from growing. They're here to help us see who we are. And Eckhart Tolle said in his book, The Power Now, you know, relationships aren't here to make us happy. They're here to make us conscious of who we are. And that's the work that we're doing. And the truth is, since we're constantly projecting onto other people, we're projecting specifically into our partners, our own issues, you know, we're constantly attacking and defending, attacking and defending. So how could we experience a healthy relationship when we're having to constantly defend ourselves from somebody's being triggered, from somebody's pain being triggered from the past? Like I've said before in my videos, the moment that you're triggered into something, like a, a, a difficult experience or uncomfortable experience or a pain, you're no longer in the present. You're in the past. Okay, You're back in the, back in the day when you first experienced that pain. And this person who's in front of you right now is bringing that up to the surface so you can see it, so that you can heal it. Obviously, it's, it's still, you're still carrying it. It's still a burden because you're still being triggered. Sometimes we could even get triggered with someone we just barely met. So how could that person who barely knows us really know how to push our buttons? Because it has nothing to do with them. It's within us. It's within us. And this is the work. So 
I, I, oft, I always share to my clients and to people that try to look in the mirror. You know, someone told me that when you look in the mirror to fix your hair or to do your makeup, you don't do the mirror's hair. You don't do the you don't do the the, the mirror's makeup. You don't do it on the mirror. You do it on yourself. I comb my hair when I look in the mirror. Okay, you ladies or gentlemen, you do your makeup when you look in the mirror. You're doing your makeup, not the mirror. So as you look into the mirror, guys and and, and ladies. Look look into yourself. Now, granted, like I said before, you're not the same person. You're two individuals. I agree. But as you're looking at certain things, certain things that annoy you from that person or bother you from that person, try to look beyond what they're doing. Try to focus more on the quality. For example, I may have a gentleman that says that he can't stand when his wife goes out shopping and spends all this money. Obviously, he doesn't do that. Okay, He says he doesn't do that, and I get it. But at the level of a quality, what quality is she showing you at that moment? Well, when I asked that question, the gentleman said, well, she's being selfish. Okay. So then how are you selfish? In what situations and with who are you selfish? What times are you selfish? And so that's what we got to look at. we got to look at the level of qualities. we got to see how is this person trying to show me me? What do I got to look within myself to be better? And that's the work that we're really doing in relationships. You know, like... I believe my friend uh, uh, Rose, she put a post on, on Facebook that talks about, you know, that no one's going to love you like you love you. No one's going to uh, bring you the things that you could bring yourself. You know, to what I got from that post is like we need to update our fairy tales, you know. There's not going to be a, a, a white prin a prince riding in a white horse coming to rescue you or carry you or bringing you a shoe, okay. So like Maggie was saying, she did her own personal work. We got to do our own personal work. We got to love ourselves as much as we can and first so that when somebody else comes along that can share that love and can share their love with me or with you, like she said in the post, it's just extra candles that you're putting on a cake that you've already been icing all along. So it's really important to do our self-work, to do our personal work. There's a quote from here that I want to share with you. It says... Ah, where is it? Where is it? So as we do the work, right? The idea is that so if if you kind of take a look at what is it that you're wanting this partner to fulfill for you? What is it that you're wanting this person to do for you, right? Chances are what you're wanting that person to fulfill for, fulfill for you is what you didn't receive growing up. So what we didn't receive growing up, we go out into the world to go get it. Okay, we go out into the world for other people to give it to us, our friends, our coworkers, our partners. And that's really what we're after. But from that perspective, we're not really owning our own stuff. We're making everybody else responsible for our for ourselves and for our happiness and for our emotional states. And there's a part here that says that the idea is to step into responsibility, to own your own stuff, to look at yourself. And as each partner takes responsibility for his or her own wounding and coping style, they can relate partner to partner. See, now I can see eye to eye, individual to individual versus maybe I'm looking to you to be my dad or maybe I'm looking to you to be my mom. See, from that perspective, I'm trying to relate to that from a place of needs, from my own wounding needs. I want you to make me feel better. I'm making you responsible for making me feel better. But like it says here, as each, as each partner takes responsibility for his or her own wounding and coping, coping style, they can now relate partner to partner, eye to eye. And then from here, it's possible to determine whether they have a common vision, okay? Because we can just assume, like the quote that I read you first, that we don't just come together because we have common goals and common beliefs and common vision. We come together because we have matching pain, okay? And we're coming to work it out. Once we get past our own pain and it, and it comes to the surface and we heal it, then we can see eye to eye, whole individual to whole individual, and now we can come to share our lives, okay? So that's kind of what I wanted to share with you guys and with uh, with everyone in, in the post here. Go back to the post if you want to. You can see what some of the people have shared. Take a look at what it is that uh, if you want to add something, feel free to add something. Put comments in there. Um, and also just know that if you're in San Antonio this weekend, I'm going to be speaking at the National Grocers off of uh, North New Braunfels and Alamo Heights. And... Um, and you can come stop by at 11 o'clock in the morning, 11 to 12.30, okay? And that's all I've got for to that tonight.
I really appreciate you spending some time with me. Now I got to get to my daughter's school. I hope you have a great Thursday night and a great, great Friday, okay? Love everyone. Peace.